Come on, Ian, like the big man Ian Wright just said there. People deluded, I'm back again. Now, Cedric Suarez potentially is finally leaving my football club. We've been linked with Braithwaite of Everton and Osman has finally spoken and shedded some sort of light in relation to his immediate plans and actually long-term plans where he wants to play football. You know, Cedric Suarez, it's a weird one because as much as I don't rate him, as much as I don't think Arsenal should be paying his wages, didn't put a gun to anyone's head to sign for this football club. Didn't make sense signing him initially, regardless of the stock gaps. And the weird thing is, as much as I do not rate Cedric Suarez, don't think he can help Arsenal in whatever they're doing. He is a Portuguese international and is an experienced individual. So with that being said, without us at least bringing in a fullback of some sorts, because it doesn't look like Young Waters or any of those are going to get a chance under Arteta, we're letting bodies go and not bringing bodies in. Hopefully there's a method to the madness. Obviously, Cedric Suarez has been on the peripheral things at Arsenal. And, you know, he's somehow been part of our return to the Champions League and outlasted several players way better than him. Uh, several reports out of Portugal, Turkey, whatever have you, have been speaking about his future. Sammy Moltbell of the Daily Mail has said, Arsenal in talks with Besiktas over deal for Cedric Suarez as the Portuguese right back, age 32, has just six months left on his contract, people. I'd imagine Cedric Suarez controls all the aces. He knows he's a marginalised figure. He knew he was going to get a lack of football. And it's more worth Arsenal moving him on, in my opinion, than him moving on because I'm sure he wants to play football, but, you know, I'm sure he's comfortable. He's clearly not a disruptive figure or he wouldn't be at the club. I'm sure he's comfortable living in London after going to Fulham on loan. Probably going to get a loyalty bonus. And he knows if you run down your contract, you're probably a more attractive proposition to several clubs. Was primarily linked with Villarreal in the summer. Um, Arsenal need to shed the wages off, off, really. So he can kind of control all the aces. If he wants to play football and stuff like that, even though he technically has been in a couple of matchday squads for Arsenal, Evidently, he needs to move on. It probably comes down to wages, but nonetheless, Arsenal defender Cedric Suarez is emerging as a serious January target for Besiktas. Talks over a move for the Portuguese right back, who is surplus to requirements at the Emirates Stadium to join the Turkish club are underway. The finer details of the potential move are still to be decided, with Suarez into the final six months of his deal at Arsenal. So we probably need to hold fire on an immediate departure. Allegedly, sources with knowledge of the deal are indicating that an agreement is moving closer, but whether Cedric Suarez immediately joins this month or as a Bosman at the end of the season needs deciding. One scenario could see Cedric Suarez joining on loan this month before joining permanently in the summer. So in an ideal world, we get a loan fee from Bichitas and they undertake some of his wages, you know, paying 95%, I guess is better than paying 100%. And I know at the time, you know, you look at Cedric Suarez, you look at Pablo Marie, those were stop gaps. But hopefully this is a lesson because we've put, I don't care what a man gets paid. It's not my money and I don't work for the football club. But when you've got mediocre players on big wages, it's, it's difficult to shift them off. And I did wonder if Cedric Suarez was going to find kind of following suit of what we saw with Pepe, Abamian, Mesut Ozil, and I'm sure a few others in that just simply put tear up his deal really and come to some agreement there, people. As you know, the 32-year-old joined from Southampton in 2020. He's fallen down the pecking order. He has made two appearances for this football club. And as you know, with his contract running down, he's actually free to reach an agreement in January to join a new club in the summer. Um, he's been linked with moving to Turkey, as I said, historically been linked with a move to Villarreal, and I'm sure there's probably other bits and pieces of interest that we're not privy to. Osman has apparently spoken on his future. Victor Osman speaks out on Arsenal and Chelsea transfer speculation. Victor Osman has distanced himself from speculation, linking him with a January move to the Premier League, which Considering the new deal he signed, we knew that was a myth. Um, though admits he would definitely be open to the idea in the future. I reckon he ends up at Chelsea. would love him at the club. As you know, the 25-year-old is currently participating on behalf of Nigeria at the Africa Cup of Nations. Smash the like button and let me know your thoughts on Osman and everything we've discussed so far, people. Quality player. Arsenal need a striker that can take us to the next level. 
Allegedly, his ex, his uh, extraordinary exploits in front of goal helped steer Napoli to a Serie A title for the first time in 33 years last term and have made him a target for the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea this January. Mikel Arteta is keen to bring in a top-class forward to the Emirates to ease the load on Jesus and Enketia, while Pochettino has been left frustrated with the lack of ruthlessness from Nicholas Jackson and believes Osman could be the man to turn Chelsea's fortunes around. He was a boyhood Chelsea fan, allegedly. It's understood Brentford and England star Ivan Tony is also firmly on the radar of both London clubs as they scour the market for attacking reinforcements to boost their prospects of the second half of the campaign. Me personally, I don't think we're going to see a winger or a striker appear at the Emirates. I think we'd be lucky to get a centre mid. I don't have any knowledge. Again, I'm just a fan. I'd imagine a defensive reinforcement of some capacity signs for Arsenal Football Club. Whether that's a loan, I don't know, people. However, it appears Arsenal and Chelsea may be forced to give up their pursuit of Osman and look elsewhere with the Nigeria international telling Sky Sports he's happy in Naples for the time being. I'm happy with the president. I have a good relationship with him. I cannot lie. I have a seriously good relationship with him. He has been with me since I signed for the club in 2020. I have a good relationship with his family also. For me, it's always important to make sure there's nothing wrong, regardless of what has happened with the relationship with him and his family. He's been the kind of president that has been supportive of me outside the pitch. And of course, I'll give my all trying to win the Scudetto for him. It's also important to have this sort of relationship to be happy with the individual and owner of the club, people. When asked on potentially playing in the Premier League, he said, of course, one day, definitely. For now, I have other plans in my career that I'm looking forward to. When the time comes, everyone will know. Now, does that mean he's staying longer at Napoli than led to believe because he has signed a one-year extension with a release clause? Has he got plans of playing in another league? Paris Saint-Germain have been linked with him. He, or is he kind of just being a bit cryptic and saying, you know what, this season I'm focusing on Napoli what shall be shall be whether that's Arsenal Paris Saint-Germain you know Chelsea whatever have you people so yeah big him up currently has seven goals in 13 league games this season Napoli are, I wouldn't say struggling but they find themselves eighth in Italy people and again once again he said for now I have other plans for my career when the time comes everyone will know you'd imagine there's talks in you know in the back burners with his advisors and things like that about the next steps apparently Arsenal according to um Alex Crook of, of um, TalkSport. Arsenal are tracking Braithwaite's situation at Everton. The Toffees could end up selling the centre-back and he's one as he's one of their most sellable assets. He's been linked with a couple of big clubs, come a long way since joining Everton from Carlisle. Did very well at PSV. He's obviously English and homegrown and we need a centre-back and he can play full-back as well. I'm all for that. Where you look at the futures potentially of Reese Nelson, Eddie Nketiah, uh, Aaron Ramsdale, Emil Smith-Rowe and just the homegrown players, I don't think they'll all leave, but they're all linked with moves away. We probably have to lock down some homegrown players. Um, we can't let them all go. We probably have to bring in some. I would have him at the club. I don't know if signing for Arsenal is something he'd be up for. Of course, we're a big club. I'm sure he's enticed with what Mikel Arteta is doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But game time might be limited. You know, if Timber, Tomiyasu, Saliba, Gabriel, they're all fit. I'd imagine he's a, he'd be ahead of Kiri in the pecking order. Um, I can't imagine Sean Dice, just like with Onana, would want to let these guys go lightly. As you know, Everton have had a 10 points points deduction. Potentially might get an additional one because them and Nottingham Forest are in hot water over the profit and sustainability rules. I can't imagine you'd want to lose in mid-season with Arsenal being a Premier League club and Everton know we've got money with him being one of their key players with him having potential to play for a number of years and obviously the English tax is going to take a lot of money whether Arsenal have the scope and the capacity to tie up a deal that is obviously favourable to whatever is available in our budget is a completely different thing but as I always say 99% of these things are lies you know, whatever percentage is left, it is what it is. Until players are holding shirts, we don't know. And most importantly, the dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. Smash the like button if you haven't, people. Uh, Victor Goyer, um, Goya Keres apparently is not planning to leave Sporting in January. This has always been the idea. The only way he leaves Sporting in January is if somebody activates his 100 million release clause. Has been linked with Arsenal and a number of clubs. Come a long way in, in Portugal since his move from Coventry and Sporting stand to make quite a lot of money, really, if they sell him. Diamande has been linked with us and Inacio, the left-sided centre-half, that's been linked with us. He's expected in the... Uh, movement is expected, sorry, in the summer as top clubs are monitoring him. Currently, he has 20 goals and 10 assists this season, so you're going to be on the radar of any club that's looking for a striker. It hasn't worked out for Marquinhos previously at Norwich. His current loan spell at Nantes in France has been cut short and he needs to go out of the door, you know, with us potentially needing a winger. If Mikel Arteta really rated him, he probably would stay at the club, which you can't necessarily rule out him 
boots staying. But um, yeah, it looks like he could be on the move again. He's currently participating for Brazil's under-23s at a pre-Olympic tournament. Where he goes next, I'm not too sure, people, really and truly. Uh, Arsenal are looking for a loan move and apparently Fabrizio Romano has said they're looking for a new loan and for a different solution. And if we're broke, he would get bring in some sort of loan fee as well. So I guess that would make sense. It was not a lucky one at Nantes. They want him to play. They want him to perform. Obviously, he's with the Brazilian national team. So it's important for him to get some minutes and some confidence. But they're looking for solutions. I think it will take some time. Obviously, the player wants to make sure it's the best solution for him. So it's not just a club side, but also the player side. It could be something in England. They're speaking to some clubs at the moment, but it's still not decided or advanced. Let's see in the next few days. Apparently, according to reports in Belgium, the gun has actually opened discussions with Everton regarding signing Onana in January, which isn't going to be a thing. Ben Jacobs has poured cold water on that and so has Sean Dice, really, but Onana would help our cause. Uh, I've spoken about this previously, but with our quest for a striker, allegedly Arsenal and Spurs are to do battle to sign the Mexican and Feyenoord striker Santiago Jimenez, who currently has 21 goals in 23 appearances for their club. And he's also been linked with West Ham. And at 22 years of age, there's a lot of longevity. You'd imagine, you know, Arsenal have a bunch of targets some players we don't know but the names that are thrown around not just at Arsenal but any other club you know um Osman Tony Vlahovic Jimenez, Boniface, Garassi, Salanki, you know, Broad, Broya, Morayo, I can't say his name, uh, Joshua Zerki, and so on and so forth. You get the point, really. You'd imagine all clubs have ran the rule over them and seen if they're the guys for the club or not. But yeah, people, I'm sure he's he's someone that will be moving on. You know, if your whole strikers are like gold dust, really, you can kind of count on, you know, the striker market's kind of poor and you can kind of count on one hand, really, strikers in world football that you really, truly believe in. So if you've got one of them at your club, you're going to want to bring in top money. And I don't know if they'll let him go mid-season. Has been some rumours he could join West Ham for 30 to 40 million euros. Make of that what you will. The nonsense rumour of the day, Arsenal have been linked with Jamal Musiala. I would love it, but I can't imagine he's going to leave Bayern Munich without a fight. And to be honest with you, someone like Musiala, I think he goes to the Paris Saint-Germain's, the Real Madrid's, them kind of clubs of this world. Obviously, he could return to Chelsea in theory because they've got the money. He has been linked with Liverpool. You know, Arsenal, Chelsea and Liverpool, all attractive propositions for Musiala. At 20 years of age, one of the most exciting young players and I've got a lot of time for him. I'd love to sign him, really. You know, Arsenal have been linked with him, De Ligt, Zuba Mendy. Douglas Louise, Osserman, you know, we're going to have the summer of, of, of all clubs, really, if these things happen, people. But the dream is free, the hustle is sold separately. And De Ligt is actually injured at the moment, but apparently his future at Bayern Munich is uncertain. He doesn't see eye to eye necessarily with Thomas Tuchel, and he's got a number of frustrations. Been linked with Arsenal, Manchester United, and a bunch of other clubs. And I'm sure if he was made available, a lot of clubs would throw their hat into the ring. PSG apparently considering a move for Bruno Gomarez. Apparently, Newcastle are struggling financially. Don't think Arsenal have the scope to spend 100 million on him. But if there's a deal to be done for him and Isaac and Newcastle are really struggling with FFP, easier said than done. But I think I speak for all Arsenal fans when we'd say we'd like Edu and, pardon me, his team to kind of explore that. But that's where you have that. I did cover this in a previous video. Check out the live stream I did earlier. Barcelona apparently really like Mikel Arteta as a potential replacement for Xavi if things go wrong. And I know Mikel Arteta has got a lot of you know, loyal supporters at Arsenal. There's a lot of people that kind of quite frankly want him out of the club. I do think he's a good manager with the potential to be great. And I do think, you know, if he leaves Arsenal with everything he's learned, another team will enjoy the fruits of our labour. And it makes sense, you know, he's Spanish. He understands what Barcelona is about and all of that jazz. It would make sense really and truly. Uh, apparently Zinchenko is pushing hard to be back in time for action this weekend but if he is absent Kirill could continue and I guess when Mikel Arteta between Thursday and Friday gives his press conference he will shed some light on how Zinchenko is doing with his calf injury but it doesn't appear that he might be fit and to have no timber Tommy Asu as well and really not have Zinchenko even though Zinchenko and Kirill is it, it, they're both not really doing the business at left back it is what it is but it, regardless of who's out there we need to get a result really against Palace uh, Zinchenko's a doubt for the game on Saturday, which we will be doing a watch along. We kick off at 12.30. I'll be live from 11.30, so make sure you join me across YouTube and Twitch. Uh, apparently, Timber is still out with a knee injury, but he is progressing well and began working with a ball again. And some of you would have seen him tweet 
back sooner rather than later. You know, obviously the player wants to be back sooner rather than later, but we need to, you know, we got to remember he's in his early 20s. We need to take our time. If he has to miss this season, but for the next five, six years, we fly straight, we fly straight. Would badly love to have Timber back at the football club. Apparently, Arsenal are looking at a young teenager who plays for Ange people, Jean Matau Bahayo. Um, he's currently playing in the second division in France, currently has five goals and two assists in 19. AC Milan and Frankfurt and Stuttgart are all looking at him. Apparently, his current club have not received um, a proposal for him or don't have any um forthcoming offers but an exit in January couldn't be ruled out and he can play in multiple positions I don't know him religiously but he's a fairly decent attacker and I used to have Kane Rose so anyone that's got Kane Rose is allowed to come to the carpet people let me know your thoughts let's see exactly what's been said here in this kind of the sun roundup apparently Arsenal have received a boost in our pursuit of Douglas Luiz as Aston Villa are keen on signing Emil Smith Rowe we've heard that before Broya Morayo of Getafe kind of quash rumours of an impending departure we all know we've been linked with Onana and allegedly have been began discussions for such people the dream is free the hustle is sold separately as i keep saying we know there's an admiration at arsenal for ivan tony apparently onan is actually keen on the switch but everton want 50 million quid for him douglas louise rumors won't go away uh, arsenal must sign zuba mendy according to fabrizio romano and i don't think he's alone he'd be one of my first choice options as well so we'll have to see really and truly people Again, where it's the 16th of January, hopefully we're able to bring a body or bodies into this football club that can tick us over into the end of the season. And where Arsenal on the football pitch is concerned, hopefully we can get our season back on track. But for now, this is all the thoughts that I have and this is everything I've got. You can rest assured any news, gossip and all of those things, I'll get videos out for you as well as other ones. Make sure you're checking out the rest of the videos. Make sure you're commenting, you're liking, you're subscribing. Journey to 70,000 is alive and kicking. With that being said, though, I appreciate you lot listening to this video. I appreciate you lot who support my content on a regular basis. Hope you and your loved ones are in great health and we'll link up again soon. But for now, people, DG, I'm out. God bless you all, man. <laughs>